guys, how's it going? So tonight I wanted to make a AR-15 disassembly, cleaning procedure, lubrication, and reassembly video due to the fact with the current election going on right now and everything that's just causing everybody to panic buy up a lot of these guns and ammo. There's going to be a lot of people that are new AR-15 owners and they don't know how to do proper maintenance to the rifle so I'm gonna go ahead and make this video for anybody even if you are already a gun owner you don't know how to clean your AR-15 I'm gonna show you the correct process to do so if you want to help support my channel you can go ahead and give me a like and you can subscribe to my channel if you haven't already you can also donate to me on PayPal to help me out with ammo expenses and all the expenses that come with running this channel I will leave my PayPal me link in the description if you're interested in doing that. There's been a large increase in gun ownership lately. And I know a lot of these new gun owners are purchasing AR-15s, so I wanted to go ahead and help educate all these new shooters and show them the correct and proper method for cleaning your AR-15 rifle. According to Bushmaster, who made this rifle, the XM15 QRC. So basically the, the basic techniques and procedure I'm going to use to do this is in the booklet that came with my XM15 QRC. And their AR-15s are mil-spec, so this should work for any other AR-15 made by anybody for the most part. So let's go ahead and get into it. The first thing we're going to want to do, obviously, is a safety check. Let's get rid of this magazine and make sure there's nothing in the chamber. Okay, so now that we got the rifle safety checked, we can go ahead and dry fire it. And then we're going to use these two pivot pins or disassembly pins to take the upper apart from the lower. And so you're going to want to do this one first, closest to the stock, and the butt stock, and then this one here closest to the barrel second. Now, if you look on the other side here, you can see there's a little button. You just push that in by hand, and then you pull it out, and there you go. So that one's the pivot pin. See, so you can pivot in, and you can see what's going on inside without having to take apart the whole rifle and then put it back together if needed. So we're going to go ahead and take out both pins, that one first, push in the second one from the back, pull that out, and there you go. You got your upper and you got your lower. So I'm going to go ahead and start out with the upper because that's the hardest and most time consuming part of them all has the bolt carrier group and everything and the lower which is the easiest of the two only has the buffer and the buffer spring to clean out and then the trigger housing which I don't really clean out because the more oil you add to it the harder it's going to be to keep it from absorbing gunpowder residue and dust and all kinds of stuff like that so I just kind of clean it out but don't lubricate it so let's go ahead and take apart the rest of the upper. So now to do that, you're going to want to pull the charging handle back. And you'll see the bolt carrier group will come out. Just straight out, just like that. There's your bolt carrier. Bolt and bolt carrier group. And then the charging handle, you just pull out. And then it just drops out just like that. So basically we'll come back to this later. This is just going to be your average barrel clean and chamber cleaning, just like you would any other rifle. The only thing that's different really is the chamber in there. You need a special chamber brush, which I'll get a better shot of when we do that. So I'm going to set the barrel aside. So now we have the charging handle, which is really nothing critical that needs to be cleaned. You could put a little bit of oil on that mechanism for that lever there and just cosmetically clean it and then you're good. The bolt carrier group, this is where it gets a little tricky. To get the bolt carrier group out of the bolt carrier, there is this retention pin right here, which holds the firing pin 
and the bolt carrier group retention pin. So in the manual it suggests to use the tip of a 223-556 round to get it started. So you go ahead and push on that end right where that hole right there is, which pushed the pin out a little bit the other way. So now I should be able to reach in and pull it out with my fingers. Okay, so I got it. So now you're going to want to tip it this facing down so the firing pin drops out. Okay, so there's the firing pin. And now to get the bolt carrier group out, now we're going to want to push this into the locked position, which would be this way. Turn it a quarter turn like that, and then it should just lift right out. See, I got that lifted out, and now the bolt carrier group will just slide right out. So there you go. You got all that out. So you're just going to want to clean the bolt carrier group. We're going to go ahead and do a quick cleaning to it. Three things I would recommend getting is a brush like this, some oil and a dropper, or some hops gun cleaner in a spray form, and then you're also going to want one of these picks to get out hard pieces of gunpowder residue that don't easily come out. And yeah, we'll just start from there. I'm just going to apply a little bit of lubrication on here, and then just kind of work it in, get everything loose. basically getting every surface on this thing clean. So with the smaller brush, you can fit it in there. So let's go ahead and add a little bit of lubrication there and in there. And I'm going to use the smaller brush and just kind of get in there and clean up all that crap that's left behind. And then I'm going to flip it over and do the same on this side. Now you can run a wire brush through yours if it's extremely dirty. But mine's probably only had four or five hundred rounds shot through it since the last time I cleaned it. So I'm not going to go that in depth with it, but I'll get one of my socks here that I use. I use these for cleaning because it's a lot easier than buying rigs that are one-time throwaways. You can use these multiple times just to show you kind of how dirty it is. See, just off that little bit, it's pretty dirty. Let's get some more on there, see how it is. See, it's not the dirtiest, but it's definitely not clean. And then, if you get this gas tube right here, you want to get that with like a Q-tip. You can get it wet with oil, but be sure to dry it out afterwards, because there shouldn't be any excess moisture in there in the gas tube. So, go ahead and getting that. See, it's not too bad. run it right. Q-tip through that one last time before we're done. Okay, so that's pretty much good, except for I missed this little channel right here on top. Put a little bit in there. And then when I'm done with each part, I go through and I clean it, dry it, get all of the residue off of it, and then I apply another thin layer of oil on the spots that need it, that have moving parts and whatnot. But the first layer of oil is just kind of loosen everything up so you can take it out and then apply a new coat of clean oil. 
So I would go ahead and call this, this is probably good for now. Okay, so now we got the firing pin. So what I like to do for this is lay it on the sock like that. And then if you have spray, like I do, this hop spray, I'll just give it two quick little sprays and let it sit for a minute. Now we got the retention pin holder. And then we will move on to the bolt itself which houses the firing pin and the ejector and then on this end as well and don't be afraid to be generous with it and then we'll just go ahead and kind of wipe that off okay so that's clean now I'll show you the next step, which is explained to me in my Bushmaster owner manual. Now you can further clean this ejector, but you have to remove another pin, which is right here. See if you can see that right there. And apparently it's a lot of a hassle, and they don't recommend doing it unless you're having ejection issues. Doing the technique I'm about to show you should solve any issue you're having and work more than good enough. Take your dropper and then put a drop of oil right there in that hole in the middle. And then you're going to want to take your 223 case, push it in on the end without the little pin right there, and then you're going to want to rock it down two times, rocking it so that pin pushes all the way down. And then you repeat the process one to two times. So I'm going to put another drop of oil and repeat the process. Rocking it, rocking it, rocking it. And that should clean your ejector really good. Now that the firing pin has been lubricated sufficiently, we're going to go ahead and clean that off which should only take 30 seconds at most. It doesn't require any brushing or anything unless there is considerable buildup that won't come off otherwise. Yeah, see, I got pretty much everything. It's clean and good to go. And then we also have that retaining pin, which was holding in place the firing pin. So I'll just go ahead and give that a quick spray. I'll just give a little quick brush there and then wipe it off the residue. So now we're going to move on to the housing for the bolt carrier and the bolt carrier group, which is in this area and also has the chamber where you're going to use your chamber brush. Okay, so you are going to need your caliber specific cleaning kit for 223-556 to do this. Or you could just go get a chamber bore brush at any gun store or sporting goods store to clean the chamber. And you'll also want the barrel cleaner. And then this is a special handle to where when you pull it out the barrel, it causes it to twist, which has it go with the rifling of the barrel, which helps clean it better for one, and for two, it'll protect the life of the chambering in your rifle's barrel. And then finally, a little cloth pad to clean out the excess oil. Okay, so we're gonna start out by just applying a little spray of oil into the chamber there, and then just kind of in the surrounding area. And we're gonna go from the opening here with this chamber brush and get it all the way up into there to where these bristles right here, the last steel bristles, are flush with the end of that. And you're just going to want to kind of spin back and forth as you go in and out, getting all that excess debris out of there. And that should be good. You can kind of go in and kind of just clean out all the inside, the aluminum in there, on the sides of the housing, just like so. Not super important, but just kind of 
cosmetically clean it and get everything out of there. Okay, so now we're ready to clean the barrel. Now to do this, there's a right way and there's a wrong way. You clean a barrel like this, especially something made for accuracy, you want the bristles of the cleaning brush to travel the same direction as the bullet. So that means to do, to accomplish this, I'm going to need to push my cleaning rod down the end of the barrel and out into the chamber like so. See, so now it's protruding out of the end of the chamber. And then from there, you can attach your cleaning brush and then pull it out from the end of the barrel out just the same way the bullet would travel. Now doing this helps wear down the barrel and keeps the rifling nice and good so your rifle stays accurate for a long time and you don't need to replace the barrel as much. So once I have it out like it is now, this is different oil than what I've been using. This is bore cleaning oil. I will apply a few drops on there. Get it nice and wet. And then I will pull it through. But this handle is designed to get the bristles to spin as you pull it through, just like the rifling of the barrel. So I'm not there yet, but now I'm there. Now I'm going to start pulling, and it's spinning as I go. And then it's going to come out. And there you go. So we're going to feed this through for the second cleaning. Pushing that in the end of the barrel very gently and carefully. I got it protruding now. And now we are ready to pull it out. All right. So now we can move on to a cloth brush. So if you recognize this, it's one of those loop ones. And then you just fish a cleaning cloth through there and you can pull it in and out of the barrel to clean it as needed. Now with this, since it's not abrasive, it doesn't matter if you go against the rifling. So I can just push that in all the way down until it pops out the other end. And then I like to kind of spin as I go. And then that got most of it. See, it's pretty dirty. Okay, so now that we're finished cleaning all the upper, including the barrel, we need to reassemble everything and put it back how it was, and then we'll move on to the lower. Okay, so now that we are ready to reassemble the bolt carrier group, there's one more important thing I need to show you. So, on this diagram here, you need to, the back end of the bolt, stagger the gas ring gaps to reduce gas pressure loss. Position the third ring gaps 120 degrees apart around the bolt, the third grab, gap not seen at the back of the bolt. These rings will slide around in their groove by pushing them into position with a small sharp object. And that is the correct way to do it. So you basically want the first gap there the second gap there, and then the middle gap right at the very back, like that. Okay, so now we're going to insert the bolt into the bolt carrier, twist it into position so the cam pin can be inserted. And get that lined up and try to drop right in, which it did. Okay, so now that it is in, twist it 90 degrees. like so, which will allow the firing pin to be inserted. Okay, so once you have the cam pin inserted, twist it 90 degrees, like so, and then push it forward, and this will allow you to insert the firing pin. To do that, I'm going to flip it upside down, and then just drop it in like so, right into there, and there we go, the firing pin is in place now. So now you're going to want to pull the bolt out like that, 
and then insert the firing pin retaining pin. So you just insert it back into this hole right here. Okay, so now that you got it started, just go ahead and take something like this, this plastic brush, push it in the rest of the way. There, now that it's seated in, that should keep the firing pin from falling out, which it does. Okay, so the next step is insert the charging handle, like so. Okay, so now let's go ahead and put the bolt carrier back in there. Alright, now you should be able to just push it all the way in, and if the dust covers close, it will pop open. Okay, so now that is completely installed. Let's go ahead drop that in and drop that in and do a quick function test everything seems to be in working order so now we can move on to the lower there's a little pin right there you can see that that needs to be pushed down to allow the buffer and the buffer spring to come out so I'm gonna go ahead and push that down be careful when you do this because it's going to come flying out on you. And there you go. There's the, the buffer right there and the buffer spring. So all you really got to do is you could just give a easy little clean out on the inside of there. You could spray some oil on the buffer spring if you want wouldn't hurt and clean it off and then clean off the buffer as well which if you hear that move back and forth that's what helps with the recoil so we'll go ahead and do that and then I'll show you how to put it back together and one other thing is you can also and I know I went over this earlier in the video but just in case you weren't paying attention clean out the trigger housing group and the meg well now to do this, you can just kind of get rid of all of the sediment and the gunpowder and everything in there. But I recommend against using oil in there also, because then that will just make more gunpowder residue collect in there easier. So I just kind of, if I do oil it, it's barely, very lightly, and then I dry it up when I'm done. So put down an old pair of boxers. Like I said, I like to reuse socks and stuff like that for these types of cleaning jobs and I'm just gonna go ahead and spray the spring down with a couple of spritzes as long as the buffer itself and flip it over the other side as well as with the buffer and that's pretty much it then I'll take this sock and kind of clean the buffer off a little bit And this isn't something that needs to be done every time, but I mean, with how easy it is to take out and access, I mean, why not? It's not going to hurt it, that's for sure. If anything, it'll just increase your rifle's accuracy and longevity. Okay, so that looks good enough for me. Okay, nice and clean now. And the spring has been sprayed down, and I'll just kind of twist. Just cleaning all the residue off of the spring and that's pretty much it okay now you just put this back on the spring slide it in over that end part and there you go there's the buffer tube right there like that and then you can just kind of get in there get that out of the way get in there and just kind of clean it out if you want you can just get in here and kind of clean the trigger housing up and I'm not applying any lubrication like I said earlier but there is a small amount of lubrication on this brush already I'm gonna get out the mag well
and then just kind of get down there in the trigger housing if you can. And that's about all I'm going to be able to get. Get that out of there, and then we can get in there with the brush. And then you can just kind of get in there and clean up all that gunk. Which there will be a lot of. You can see already it's black. But there's no need to lubricate this area. Just trying to clean out all the residue we can. And honestly, I feel that's good enough for me. And then you can kind of just get a rag and clean, dry these sections a little bit more. Getting those retaining pins, getting the mag well. And that's it. Now I will go ahead and show you how to reassemble the lower. So you're just going to insert the spring in and then push down all the way until you get to that pin. And then you have the flat side right there. There's three flat sides on the rounded circle. You're going to want to line that up with the pin. And then if you just push that past the pin, the pin will drop down just enough for it to s slide into place. And there you go. There's your fully cleaned and reassembled Armalite 15 MSR rifle. Let's do a function test. Bolt carrier group and charging handle seems to be working fine. Highly recommend cleaning and lubricating all new rifles that you unbox whether it appears to be lubricated or not. Something you should definitely do if it's your first AR-15 is learn the ins and outs of it, learn how to disassemble and reassemble it, and clean and lubricate it. And the longevity of the rifle and the performance overall will last a lot longer. Well, thanks for watching this video, guys. I hope this guide helps people that didn't know before now know how to properly clean and maintain their Armalite 15 rifle. Don't forget to give me a like and subscribe to my channel and have yourselves a good rest of your weekend and stay safe out there.